الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters, primarily we should be reminding each other every time about the relationship we have with Allah and how to develop it and how to improve on it and every day we should be better than we were the previous day in this beautiful relationship with he who made us he whom we're going to return to and the one who is in control of every aspect of our living and that of every creature that he has created we do know that we passed the month of Ramadan just over two months back and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed us to do a lot of good during this month of Ramadan. Both types of good, that which is connected to acts of worship solely and only for Allah without the connection of a fellow human or any other creature of Allah known as Hukukullah or the rights of Allah, such as the five daily prayers, such as the fasting, such as the recitation of the Quran and also the second type of acts of worship that which is done for the pleasure of the Almighty but where another human or another creature benefits and we earn a reward known as Hukukul Ibad to be charitable, to be kind, to develop our character, our conduct and so on. Yet again Allah gives us another season, the season known as the best 10 days. In Ramadan, the nights were more blessed than any other nights. Looking at Laylatul Qadr or the night of decree being the most powerful night of the whole year. But what about the days? The days of the first 10 of Dhul Hijjah are more valuable than the days of Ramadan, speaking of daylight. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the messenger, peace be upon him. مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ الْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ فِيهِنَّ there are no deeds in which Allah, sorry, there are no days in which Allah loves deeds more than those that are done during these first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Similarly, Allah never takes an oath in the Quran except by that which is really great from amongst His creatures. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah swears by Al-Fajr, the dawn, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the 10 days. And He calls them 10 nights, similarly to when we were to visit a place and someone asks us, how long were you there for? And you say, I was there for 10 nights. You actually mean 10 days. So in the Arabic language at times, just like in the English language, we use the term nights in order to refer to the days. But the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ clarifies that and actually confirms that this is referring to the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. So if we were told that there are no days wherein deeds are more loved by Allah than these 10, what should we be doing? And many people have responded in a very, very long, lengthy way where people sometimes feel confused. There is no need to be confused. My brothers and sisters, I'm going to simplify it for you today. What should you be doing in these 10 days? Number one, make sure that you don't sin. That's one of the most important things you could do. The hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, إِذَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ فَانْتَهُ In fact, he also says, إِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ when I've ordered you to do something, do it to the best of your capacity. But when I've prohibited something or told you not to do something, do not do it. Subhanallah. So to abstain from sin is a very great act of worship. If your day passes or if your days pass where you have not sinned against Allah, you have not transgressed, you have not done anything that would displease Allah, I promise you, you have succeeded. So the first thing we need to do during these 10 days, and obviously it will extend beyond, but something we must become conscious of, don't sin. Beloved worshipper of Allah, my brother, my sister, there is no point in sinning, especially during a time when Allah says, good deeds are most loved to me. Obviously in that case, bad deeds would be even worse to be committed 
during these 10 best days. My brothers and sisters, the next thing that we should be doing, seeking the forgiveness of Allah often, one of the best things you could do is to seek the forgiveness of Allah. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ Allah says, tell my worshippers, those who have transgressed against themselves, never to lose hope in my mercy. For indeed, I will forgive all the sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving, most merciful. He says, never lose hope in my mercy. He also says, turn to Allah, turn to your Lord before a day comes and then you won't be helped or you may regret. That is all part of the plan of Allah. Allah does not want you to do that where you will regret. So he says, turn to me. Don't lose hope in my mercy. So that brings me to the second part of the issue of seeking forgiveness. Together with seeking forgiveness, you must be convinced that Allah has forgiven you because he says he is the most merciful, the most forgiving, the most kind, the most compassionate. One of the plans of the devil is that he wants to make us feel that we're not forgiven. My brothers and sisters, the second thing, and like I said, that you should be doing during these 10 days, seek forgiveness a lot. We don't know when we're going to die. We don't know at what age, what time, where, the place. No one knows where they're going to die. وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ no soul knows on which land, where exactly it's going to die. So let's prepare for the day we're going to meet with Allah by seeking a lot of forgiveness. Good news of a special place in paradise for the one on whose pages lots of forgiveness is found. What are these pages? The book that you have written, your deeds, subhanallah. Thereafter, my brothers and sisters, what we need to make sure we do, fulfill the obligations and the farad upon you. Fulfill that which is obligatory. So your prayers, five daily prayers, don't miss them, especially the farad. We haven't even spoken about extra deeds. If you stay away from sin, seek a lot of forgiveness and fulfill your obligations during these 10 days, wallahi, you have succeeded in a very great way, but you can do much more. So remember, what are your obligations? It is an obligation for me to dress appropriately. It is an obligation for me to uh, fulfill my five daily prayers. And it is an obligation for me to do so much for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's move on to something else. My brothers and sisters, we must try to be charitable during these days. Charity is not only connected to wealth, although that is a great chunk of it, but it's also connected to your character, your conduct, your kindness, your goodness, your expressions on your face. Become more conscious of it during these 10 days. Learn to smile. Don't have a miserable expression, my brothers and sisters. It is an act of worship to ensure that the expression on your face is calming. It is something that brings about joy to those who witness it, who see it. That's why the Prophet ﷺ clearly says, Tabassumuka fi wajhi akhika sadaqa. To smile at the face of your brother is an act of charity. You uplift them, you actually boost them, you give them a good feeling, subhanallah, and it is contagious. They feel they can communicate with you. So my brothers and sisters, be charitable. Give out a little bit of charity, even if it is a dollar or a pound or a rand. And if you can, give out something every day. You can space out your charities for these first 10 days because Allah loves good deeds during these days more than he loves them during any other time. So just remember that, my brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Similarly, my brothers and sisters, try and read some Quran every day. Read a little bit. 
set aside a portion of the day to read a page. Subhanallah. If you're flowing or you know it off by heart, read a little bit more, my brothers and sisters. But remember, these 10 days are the days wherein Allah will love that recitation more than any other days, blessed days. Similarly, when it comes to fasting, we should try and fast. You don't have to fast all the days, but make sure you fast on the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, the day of Arafah. So it's amazing because that day is so blessed to fast on. The hadith says it expiates the sins, meaning it wipes out this, the minor sins of all that which was done during the previous year as well as during the coming year. So if I were to fast on the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, the past year, all the minor sins wiped out. And the coming year, all the minor sins wiped out. That doesn't mean I need to continue engaging in minor sins, but it's Allah telling you, you must reset your relationship with Allah and we're giving you the opportunity. You must start off on a good foot. And that is Allah giving you the chance to say, we're giving you a clean slate. I must clarify my brothers and sisters, major sins require specific repentance. You need to seek specific forgiveness for those sins that are major. And a major sin is that sin wherein which Allah has mentioned specific punishment and he has given stern warnings. Those would be considered major sins. So my brothers and sisters, these are the blessed days. Read the Quran, read the Quran on a daily basis. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you together with that. Spare a moment to read the translation of the Quran, a little bit of it. Pick up a verse, two verses, read the translation, put it into practice. Another good thing to do during these 10 days, teach someone some good. Subhanallah. The Prophet Muhammad was sent as a teacher to us. He was sent as a muallim, as a teacher to us. And he loves that. And he told us, that whatever you learn from me, teach it. Teach from me, even if it means a single verse. In fact, any goodness you have, teach it. To whom? Primarily to your children, your family members, your spouse, your siblings, your parents, your folks, those you interact with. Why not? And then perhaps to the rest of the world. If Allah has given you an opportunity to have a following online, perhaps on social media, Make sure you're leading them in the right direction. Make sure you're leading them in the right direction. I tell you, if you're leading them in the right direction, you can earn Jannah simply by your social media accounts. You can earn paradise simply by the correct use of your social media accounts. If thousands of people have benefited from what you've said and have developed a better relationship with Allah, you've encouraged them to seek forgiveness. You've encouraged them to improve. Wallahi, the mercy of Allah when he accepts the deed of yours will be such that you can never regret. It is considered a sadaqatun jariya. It is considered a charity that the reward of which will continue even after your death. So learn to encourage people. In the same way, I must mention the other side, if you were to use your social media accounts in a destructive way, you will regret. Why? Because if you've taught people to do the wrong thing or if you've encouraged them to transgress against Allah or if you have encouraged them to engage in the weakness that you have, then the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, everyone who followed your bad example you will actually carry their burden. You know, the Quran tells us, No soul or no shoulders shall bear the burden of another. No soul shall bear the burdens of another. But the exception is made by the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ where he says, unless you were directly involved in teaching encouraging, promoting that particular vice or that evil, then you share exactly the same sin as all those who have followed you. This is why we tell our young boys and girls, the teenagers and even the adults, be very responsible when you're using social media. Way after your death, people will be either learning from you or meaning good or bad. It's up to you what you'd like to do. Don't be 
Don't be shy to delete that which is bad, no matter how popular it's become. A trend we have nowadays, people want to do silly things in order to become famous. If that's the case, we can do better. My brothers and sisters, we can do much better. So in these 10 days, let's revisit that relationship we have with the rest of humankind through social media. If you can clean your act, you have definitely done something good during these 10 best days. And Allah says, cleaning your act is definitely an act of worship. Allah loves it. I mean, turning to Allah. Consider your relationship with Allah. Develop it. Subhanallah. Introspect. Think about who you are. Do you like the person you are? Do you like your relationship you have with Allah? Do you like that if you were to die right now, you would be satisfied with your deeds and what you're doing? If the answer is no, you can do better. In fact, we can all do better, inshallah. So become more conscious of it and build that relationship with Allah. This is Allah reminding us that everything you do, you will see. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Whoever does an atom's weight of good will see the good. And whoever does an atom's weight of bad will see the bad. We don't want to see that bad. So what do we do? Seek forgiveness. Allah says we'll wipe it out completely if you've changed your life and don't be ashamed if you've changed your life that's what allah wants why do you think allah gives us ramadan every year why do you think he gives us these auspicious days and nights every year in order for us to reset our relationship with him to tap us on the shoulder and tell us it's time you turned to allah so my brothers and sisters be charitable remember to fast on the ninth at least like i said you may fast during the days in the run-up to the ninth but the ninth is the most rewarding. Similarly, you need to know on the 10th, it is prohibited to fast. Why? Because that's the day of Eid. It's the day of eating and drinking and thanking Allah. So you're supposed to be engaging in the dhikr of Allah during these days as well. What's the dhikr of Allah? Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Glory be to Allah, Praise be to Allah, Allah is the greatest, there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, Oh Allah, I beg your mercy, and so on. So we remember Allah. Also, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. And for him belongs all praise. Subhanallah. To him belongs all praise. So to repeat that, especially on the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th, that is an amazing act of worship. The days of tashriq. The days of tashriq are clear. They are the days wherein which we actually say the dhikr, the specific dhikr after every compulsory prayer. So you have the day of Eid and the three days after that, four days in total, those are known as the days of tashriq. You are not allowed to fast during the days of Eid. They are the days of eating and drinking and remembering Allah, but don't be wasteful. Similarly, think about the poor and the needy, those who are sickly, those who've passed on, make dua for them. That brings me to the next point to do during these days. Pray for others. Call out to Allah for yourself and for others. Supplicate. That is called dua. So we make dua not just for ourselves, but for others as well. Think of the poor, the needy. Subhanallah, it's amazing. Many times we ask Allah for our needs, not knowing that when you call out to Allah for the needs of others without them knowing, Allah fulfills your needs to begin with. Amazing. One of the ways of getting Allah to fulfill your needs is to ask Allah to fulfill the needs of others, no matter where they are across the globe. And this is how Allah will help you and guide you and give you the goodness that you're asking for. You want to get married, make dua for Allah to grant spouses to others and see what happens about you as well. Because the angels say, Oh Allah, grant this person the same. Grant this person goodness as well. Another thing to do during these days, as you're seeking forgiveness of Allah, forgive others. 
Find it in your heart to develop a good relationship with others. Go out and mend relationships with your brothers, your sisters, your uncles, your aunts, your nephews, your cousins, your parents, perhaps grandparents, in-laws, whoever it may be. Go out and mend relationships. Mending relationships is definitely a great act of worship. And Allah mentions it many times in the Quran. So my brothers and sisters, while we are seeking the forgiveness of Allah, there is a greater chance if we were to forgive others that Allah will forgive us. <laughs> Surah An-Nur, Allah tells us, would you not like Allah to forgive you? Well then forgive others and embrace them. Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. So that verse teaches us, yes, forgive others. Sometimes if a person is not remorseful and they have wronged you, you may want to forgive them, but not interact so much with them simply because you don't want to be bitten from the same direction twice. And you're a believer. لا يلدغ المؤمن من جحر واحد مرتين. A believer is never bitten from the same source twice. So remember, you may want to forgive someone, but if they're not remorseful, you don't have to embrace. You don't have to actually, you know, return to the relationship you were in the past. But in your heart, you don't hold the burden. You've forgiven them. You've let it go. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us. So these are some of the deeds that we can engage in. We engage in acts of worship and so on. And I want to end with one of the most beautiful acts of worship, the sacrificial animal on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, which is the day of Eid. And if you have not done it on the 10th, then the 11th, the 12th, etc. Some of the scholars say all the days of Tashriq, and some of them say, well, the three days, the day of Eid and two days after, and some say three days after. Either way, a lot of the scholars say it's best to do it on the 10th because they, it happens to be one of the 10 days. And if that's one of the best 10 days, then Alhamdulillahi ala dhalik. Why not? But still, the matter is broad regarding sacrifice. You are allowed to sacrifice during the stipulated days and not just one day. My brothers and sisters, remember, we want to reach out to others. I leave you with a beautiful point to ponder. Allah Almighty rewards you when you interact with fellow human beings or other creatures in a beautiful way when you help them, when you uplift them, and when you have reached out to them. So my brothers and sisters, why would Allah do that? Because He wants you to enjoy your life in a way that you know that if I am down, all my brothers and sisters will be there for me. Are you there for others? If the answer is no, change that. A day will come when everyone will be there for you. People you didn't imagine will come to your rescue. Don't be shy. These are the days of COVID-19. These are the days of challenge across the globe. If you need help, yes, you ask Allah. But Allah says you are allowed to seek help from others if you need that help and they have the capacity to give it to you. For example, you're unwell. You need someone to take you to the doctor and you know that they can do it and you know physically Allah's given them the ability. While you're asking Allah for cure, you can reach out to your neighbor to say, look, I'm struggling. I need your help. May Allah make it easy for you to help me. And that's what happens. So my brothers and sisters, may Allah bless every one of us. And may Allah cure us all. Those who've passed on, may Allah have mercy on them. I pray that these 10 days change us for the better. Make us more conscious of everything we do. Make us more conscious of our relationship with Allah. Improve on things. Don't go back. Improve on things. Don't go back. And if you've gone back, come back. Allah loves you. بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن والسنة ونفعني وإياكم بما فيهما من الآيات والحكمة وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته